Hi friends, a very good evening to all of you. Thanks for joining in on this personal finance spaces of JST Investments. I am Aditya Kondawar. I'll be a moderator and host for the evening. I head operations and marketing for JST Investments. Today we have with us a very special guest, uh, Mr. Mahavir Chopra, who should be called Insurance Man. He is the go-to person for all things insurance. So first of all, thank you, Mahavir, for taking out your precious time to educate us on a topic that gets ignored a lot. Right, but as we will learn in the session, it's it's very costly to ignore this aspect. So let me give you a brief about Mahavir Chopra. He has close to two decades of experience in digital insurance, especially uh, health and life insurance. Uh, Mahavir has written columns in Money Control, Live Mint, Economic Times, amongst a host of uh, various print media's, and he has been also featured on a few TV channels. He is a chartered accountant by qualification, and he has worked with companies such as EY, Thomas Cook, Marsh, and then. Coverfox.com as well as their CBO. All this is before he founded Beshak.org, a 100% neutral platform that helps customer discover the best plans and the best financial advisors in India. So before I hand it over to uh, Mahavir, I just want to say that you know uh, whenever I have an insurance doubt, I head directly to Beshak.org and they have created a beautiful uh, you know compilation of articles which will solve all of your doubts on insurance. So with that, again, thanks a lot, Mahavir, for joining in. Uh, if you want to say something, you can just say that, and I'll just bombard you with questions. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I've been uh, uh, an uh, avid follower of JST and uh, all of you guys, uh, Anish, uh, you, Aditya Kondavar, and Aditya Shah. Uh, and honestly, I think we started uh, Beshak at the same time, if I'm not wrong, when JST started. And... Uh, I've Correct. seen yeah. I, I've seen the journey of uh, JST and the kind of work that you do. Uh, I always tell my team, uh, and right now also about 15 minutes ago, I was telling my team that you know you should learn from uh, uh, JST Investments in terms of the kind of work they do, the kind of team that they have built. Uh, speak to Anish uh, for how what the the kind of the quality of research they do. Speak to Aditya for the kind of work they do. Uh, so so I'm a I'm a big fan of you guys. Uh, Probably I may not have said in those many words, but I've always loved the kind of work you do because it's very deep, and uh, there's a lot of hard work that you guys do, uh, which is very rare. Uh, uh, we see a lot of you know peripheral content, you know, which is just scraping the surface, and then you then then there is there are people like you who go very very deep, and we have tried that. You know how difficult it is to go deep. <laughs> Thank you, thank you so much, Mahavir. Uh, you know, for those kind words, and right back at you. You know, like I, like I was just saying in my opening remarks. You know, uh, your yours is the most comprehensive website when it comes to all things insurance, right? Uh, so thank you. Uh, and like you said, you know, we started our journeys together, so that's one more common thing that we have, right? So I'm going to start. Okay, Mahavir. Uh, you know, the 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 biggest. Uh, you know, when it comes to insur health insurance, right? The biggest myth myth that exists in a person's mind is that you know, health insurance. Is an unnecessary expense, you know, and it is not worth it. I mean, people think that you know, I'm so healthy. What's going to happen to me? So why why waste my money on premium? But in the reality, you know, those pre those health insurance premiums are an investment. So can you just help us understand why? Right, right. So I always uh, go back to uh, uh, whenever there are a lot of people who say this, right? And I always go back to mathematics because I think in, as Indians, हमको सबसे ज़्यादा जो समझ में आता है वो basic mathematics समझ में आता है. Uh, do whatever calculation you do at whatever premium you are going to pay, and if you multiply it by the number of years you are going to be, uh, you know, buying insurance, uh, it is going to pay you off. I I have been I have been uh, advising, selling, uh, talking about insurance for almost 15, 16 years, and I have to still find someone who has regretted to buy insurance, uh, specifically health insurance. Uh, uh, the way we are living our lives today. Uh, uh, all all the aspects, right? If you look at the external aspects like pollution, uh, the way the weather is changing. If you look at the the pandemic that we saw in the last two years, plus if you see our own lifestyle in terms of the the habits that we have, the food that we eat, the stress that we take, uh, in, in not taking insurance is basically going in the high seas without uh, carrying enough food, carrying enough, uh, you know, uh, 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 let's say. Uh, protection equipment that ensures that you will survive through let's say a long journey right so uh, uh, risk management uh, and uh, is something which comes 
uh, as a first thing that someone should look at before even starting financial planning is my view. One of which obviously which you guys have kept talking about emergency funds. And the second will obviously be things like life insurance and health insurance. Uh, so yeah. yeah, coming back to the maths, which I was telling basically, uh, basic maths, I mean, if you even take at a very high premium, let's say take at a 30,000 premium per year. And even if you pay for that same premium for 30 years, uh, even higher, right? If you multiply with 30, you will see that you pay approximately 10 lakh rupees. Uh, for th 10 lakh rupees, you're basically easily going to get a cover of 10 lakhs into 30, right? Uh, every year, your cover re uh, gets refilled, right? You don't have a cover for only one year like term insurance. and in health insurance, your cover is refilled every year. You get, you, if you use a cover for a particular year, it's not that it ends in that year. You, uh, even if you utilize a certain cover, the next year, your cover starts from zero, right? So from that perspective, right. Uh, when you do the math, uh, you will see that at any cost, even at a 50% additional cost of whatever price we are paying today, and with combining with the kind of risks that we are taking today with our health anyways, externally and internally, like I mentioned, it is a no-brainer to buy a product like health insurance. And plus, we saw the pandemic. And pandemic was like the biggest uh, reality check for all of us that hum kitle bhi healthy ho jaye, kuch bhi ho jaye, uh, still, you know, we could get hospitalized. We saw the best of the people with the best uh, health also succumbing to pandemic and being hospitalized for 15, 15, 20, 20 days. So all this put together, I think it's a no-brainer to buy health insurance. I think that's something that I don't think we need to yeah. convince people right now. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So I really loved the example, you know, uh, when you said that you you venture out in the high seas without any food backup and all of that, right? And of course, like you said, you know, pandemic was a great teacher to all of us that you know, even though you may be healthy internally. You know, there are always external factors that may affect you, right? So Correct. it's always very important to have a health insurance. Correct. So when should one buy health insurance? You know, Mahavir, the next question arises. Right. So uh, in our view, uh, we should we should have a health insurance right from the day you are born to the uh, uh, to the time uh, the person is alive, right? Uh, there should be no time when you should not be covered with health insurance. Now. Uh, whether this health insurance is bought by you or is bought by your parents or is bought by your employer or is bought by, uh, uh, you know, someone else for you is something which is the second question that will come into your mind. So first question is whether you should have health insurance, which age you should have health insurance. In our view, every person who is alive should have health insurance right from birth uh, is, our, is the answer. When should you buy your own health insurance? I think by the time uh, uh, you are able to pay premiums yourself. Uh, you should start uh, fund financing or investing in your own health insurance. So probably people who, let's say, reach an age of 24, 25. And anyways, health insurance requires you to move into a separate policy after a particular age. So most of the policies say that, uh, you know, you can't be a policy, part of a policy of your parents after the age group of 25. So after you cross 25, it is always good to basically move into your own insurance and fund it with your own money. So have your own personal insurance as soon as possible, which is in most cases, 25 years of age. Understood. <clears throat> Very clear. You know, the next question that arises Mahavir is that which kind of a health insurance you should buy? You know, there are so many options in the market that it can really intimidate you. It can confuse you. So how do you choose an insurer? How do you choose a policy? What are the broad features that it should have? Right. Yeah, so this this question is a obviously a very broad question. Uh, I'll try to summarize uh, the most important things that a person should look at when he's buying health insurance. Uh, uh, sure. So uh, the most important thing, the first thing that you ask is that there are various types of policies. Right? Uh, there is a health insurance, then there is a top up, then there are basically accident policies, there are critical illness policies. There are cancer policies. There are so many different kinds of policies. All basically solve a different purpose, and they solve a different uh, problem uh, for uh, for uh, the financial life that you are living. Right? Uh, the most important and the most primary of this product is uh, a health insurance product because it covers the largest of the expenses uh, that can hit your bank account and basically burn your savings, which is uh, basically covering hospitalization expenses. If you see the history of uh, anybody's financial life who's gone through, let's say, healthcare expenses, the largest dent that can uh, be uh, that that can be experienced by anybody and would have been experienced by anybody would be related to hospitalization expenses. That's where health insurance, which is the uh, 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 also called Mediclaim by some people, 
is the product that uh, one should basically look at as the first product. Uh, top ups are basically products which are bought to optimize for cost and to increase your cover so that it is uh, relevant for uh, for for your retirement and uh, your entire life right after you get old critical illness is a separate product which solves a very different problem it solves the problem of basically loss of earnings in case there is a serious illness and because of which there is a curtailment in your income or you lose your job uh, uh, or those kind of things so every product will solve a different problem that's the full answer to your first uh, first half of your question uh, second half is basically how do you choose a health insurance uh, hamara view hai, and this is how we have looked at is that you should optimize for two things one is optimize for have ensuring that you have the lowest out of pocket expenses right uh, so uh, basically ensure that you buy a policy which is the most comprehensive policy which ensures that all the core hospitalization expenses and even for futuristic purposes in terms of you know modern treatments and uh, you know organ donation all those kind of treatments are covered up to the sum insured right uh, so first problem that you should solve is ensuring that the policy covers you comprehensively and needs you to pay the least amount of money out of pocket right in this what are the areas that you should look for right uh, then there are two parts of it the first part is what i'm explaining right now in the part where you are basically trying to ensure that there is the lowest deductions in your policy you should basically first ensure the most important thing that you should ensure is that you have adequate coverage right adequate coverage is something that you should calculate not basis today's expenses aaj ki tarikh mein the expenses that you could max look at in a hospitalization could be 5 to 6 lakhs you should look at factoring your health insurance coverage for your old age right there are two reasons for that one is that at your old age is when you will need healthcare financing for the uh, would be the most important right and i'm talking about basically after you cross 50 55 years of age it will become very very relevant yeah. second is obviously inflation right healthcare inflation most of the people say that is in double digits right it is between 10 to 12% uh, and there are varied numbers so let's take it as 10% uh, so factor both these things and then calculate your health insurance coverage right uh in our view our calculations say that anybody who's in the age group of between 30 and 35 uh let's say he's got married he's recently uh, also become a parent quickly should buy a cover which is enough uh, which should basically be close to around 15 lakhs per adult member in the family so let's say if there are two adult members in the family that you're covering you should buy a 30 lakh cover is what we recommend this is basically relevant for the for a person's entire uh, lifetime right why you should not look at covering uh, taking a small cover today and then upgrading later because uh, if you go to our forum or if you go to anybody's forum if you go to tora also you will see that people struggle to get an upgrade in their insurance after anybody in their family has been suffered suffering with a disease right so it's a very big risk to take a small cover today and uh, factor a upgrade let's say 2 3 years later the best way and the best strategy is to take the highest cover possible today and available both factors one is from your retirement point of view and second is basically from a point of view of affordability right if you can't afford very very high premiums then you can create a road map of 3 to 5 years and upgrade your cover every year to ensure that let's say by the time you hit 35 which is you have a 15 lakh cover per family member right so that is only covering coverage right which is basically कि कितना कवर लेना चाहिए बियॉन्ड दिस देर आर मल्टीपल फैक्टर्स दैट यू शुड चेक इन हेल्थ इंश्योरेंस पॉलिसी एंड आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट ओनली द कोर टू थ्री पैरामीटर्स बिकॉज ऑब्वियसली विद टाइम दैट वी हैव विद लिमिटेशन ऑफ टाइम आई एम गोइंग टू कवर ओनली द लार्जर वन वॉट यू शुड लुक एट इज दैट आफ्टर यू हैव सीन कवरेज यू शुड लुक एट ऑब्वियसली रूम रेंट लिमिट रूम रेंट लिमिट इज द सिंगल बिगेस्ट रीजन वाई यू हैव डिडक्शन इन योर पॉलिसी and which could go to around 50% of the claim amount your hospitalization bill could be uh, could have uh, a deductions up to 50% 60% if you don't cover your uh, policy with a good room rent limit right so look for a policy which does not have a room rent limit would be the best policy in the market you should look at if you are not getting a policy with a, 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 an unlimited room rent then next that you could look for is a policy which is covering you for at least private room 
for your life right so that there is a there is a there is a good quality care that you can access at any point in your life right so that is a room rent limit apart from this there are certain broad headings which should should go very deep and understand uh, uh things like daycare hospitalization which is basically hospitalization that happens within the day and you are discharged in the same day ensure that there is no limitation in that kind of hospitalization because as we grow older what's happening is that most of the hospitalizations are becoming gradually will become daycare hospitalizations uh, uh, uh because of multiple reasons right uh, and uh, the advancement of medical science so ensuring that having all kinds of daycare hospitalizations covered is the second point that you should look at third is basically all modern kind of treatment should be covered treatment at home domiciliary treatment uh, modern treatment which is basically all the robotic surgeries uh, there should be no limitations in these kind of uh, uh, broad uh, sub categories of coverage that are available in health insurance and the last one is organ donor which you should ensure that is covered up to the sum insured in your policy if you are covering all these five six major uh, categories uh, you can ensure that you have a good coverage and not a very big amount of deduction in your policy so that's the first part i'm coming to the second big part the second big part that any customer looks for after looking at ke mera koi paisa nahi katna chahiye is that i get a very very good experience right so a i should be getting all the money that i have spent b i should be getting this money at the most smoothest way possible for this there are multiple parameters that can be looked at like for example how soon can an insurer pay, pay claim how soon does an insurer pay cashless claims how quick is the insurer in solving complaints how how quickly can an insurer uh, solve for uh, you know uh, grievances uh, what are the outstanding claims and how many days are these claims outstanding for and a numerous other other parameters like uh, ratios that are available are supposed to be looked at to understand the customer service and the quality of experience that you will get when you buy the policy so there are two aspects to it that you should be looking at the first aspect is out of pocket expenses second is experience so i'll try to summarize this in like 10 minutes sorry this was very long but the <laughs> uh, uh, no no uh, worries but, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, Mah- yeah, yeah. So Mahavir, I think uh, what you just answered was, I think, I think it was the crux of the space, right? So I would just request you, you know, post the space. You can just share some uh, content around it, you know, because people sure. need to read it, sure. read it, and then they come to appreciate that okay, these are the right, these are the things that are very important, right? So like you, sure, sure, sure. Right, like you spoke about room rent limit and all that, right? You know, yep. the next question yep. that naturally comes is that, you know, how this insurance is going to be bought, okay? Do you have to buy it online or offline? Do you have to buy it through an agent? Through I mean, what are the pros and cons in each? And if you could give an actionable insight, where do you have to buy it actually? So that would be great. Yeah. Sure. So uh, this is something that I have tried to study all my life, actually. Uh, my entire career, <laughs> I, I have tried to only study this, that, you know, how can, who can be the best person uh, to... Uh, uh to give that kind of service that a customer is looking for right uh the benefits of online is obviously convenience that you are at your home and you can compare policies and buy the policies whenever you want to uh the and there could be some benefits in terms of some kind of discounts that you could get if you buy the policy online uh the benefits of offline in my view completely uh, overweigh the benefits of online which has only discount and convenience is basically that if you buy the policy from a right advisor benefits of a of a credible advisor someone who has a track record of uh, handling claims and has experience of managing claims for people uh, is way better than anything that you can get in terms of discounts and convenience when you buy online so our uh, uh, after a lot of uh you know study uh, talking to customers talking to advisors and uh, the experience that i've had for so many years i've i've realized this that the best person to buy a health insurance policy is from is is a local advisor who has the best track record in in, in your area for basically managing claims and who who understands uh, how claims work and can navigate through insurance companies right that's the best in my view uh 
uh, if you are not able to find those kind of uh, advisors in your area then what we are building at basic is the second best in our view where we are trying to curate uh, financial advisors uh, in in the from the from the country uh, who who are people who have that credibility the background the experience and the knowledge of being able to manage claims and uh, help customers after they have bought the policy so our view is very is very very uh, clear about this that buy a policy from someone who will be able to manage your claims and has the knowledge and the track record of managing claims understood uh you know when, whenever we talk about health insurance you know we usually talk about you know people who are young you know 20s 30s 40s but you know senior citizens usually get ignored in this yeah, debate yeah. so how should senior citizens uh, buy their insurance policies because you know uh, as we all know you know with age uh, the probability of a disease contraction increases and a lot of insurers may not be really you know keen to give <clears> them a policy so how does it work you know right. what are the options available to them right uh, so first thing is that uh, uh, you know uh, don't wait till you become a senior citizen to buy a policy uh, uh, that is my first suggestion because a lot of uh, thing what happens is that a lot of people are contemplating and depending on their company's policy and these are those people who who depended on their company's policy for their life and now basically are in the market looking for health insurance at a at a senior citizen age right so don't let that happen whoever is here on this call don't let that happen to you because honestly it's a very very tricky proposition uh you are in the market and when you are a citizen you are in the market so let's say you are taking a loan right you are in the market with the lowest civil score and you are looking at buying uh, or, uh, or and taking a loan how many companies would be ready to give you a loan is the same situation that a senior citizen is in when he is trying to or she is trying to buy a health insurance so don't wait for your health score or your lifestyle score to go to that level where you have to then compromise at your uh, for your uh, the kind of policy that you get get and at what price you get that's the first thing that i would like to uh, recommend everybody on here on this space now coming to the answer for people who have never been able to buy a policy and now wanting to buy a policy who are senior citizens uh, usually we will divide the senior citizens into two or three types right the first type is senior citizens who don't have a health issue Uh, who are still uh, fit uh, obviously it's a very uh, small number of people or small percentage of people but people who do not have major diseases or have let's say only uh, one one simple lifestyle illness uh, they have the best probability of getting mainstream uh, policies that you or i at a young age can get right uh, they will be required to go for a medical checkup but after the medical checkup if you if you are a senior citizen or if you are buying a policy for a senior citizen who doesn't have any major health issues then they can go for any mainstream policy which basically allows for people above 65 years to be covered and we have an article on our website where we have listed such policies which provide insurance to uh, uh, the comprehensive insurance product that they have irrespective of the age you are in so there is no entry limit in their policy so you could first consider those policies if you are uh, someone who is although above 60 but do not have any major health issues and you're fit you don't have any major uh, lifestyle issues or habits right? that's the first category obviously it's a very small proportion of the total senior citizen population the second category is people who have health uh, issues probably a health condition like a diabetes right or let's say thyroid or let's say Uh, uh something related to a surgery that was done in the past that is the second category this category will basically have to look at senior citizen policies there are senior citizen specialized policies that are available these are policies which are uh, have limitations in terms of benefits in terms of coverage but these are the policies that people who have a disease probably are have a higher chance to be able to get right in the market then there are the third people who uh, probably have had a serious illness in the past or have had let's say a major surgery in the past like for example someone who has gone through a heart surgery or someone who is a cancer survivor or someone who has had uh, multiple diseases in the past right like someone who also has diabetes also has hypertension also is overweight right there are so many people like that uh, who also are looking for health insurance those kind of people will have to look at very very specialized policies and these are very 
few policies that are available in the market uh, that they will have to go for iske baad if you are not getting any of these policies right or one two three all the categories that i mentioned then the fourth option is to go to a government bank and look for a government group insurance scheme that is available through some government insurance company and try to get uh, into the policy through that route the only shortcoming of buying a group policy through a bank is going to be that that premiums of that policy are unpredictable and the policy coverage is also unpredictable so hence it should be used as the last resort if you don't get category 1 category 2 category 3 of policies then go for a group policy so that's how we look at it it's a it's a deduction based uh, it's a it's a deduction methodology where you first go for the best available policy and if you don't get step by step you look at policies which are probably where you'll have to compromise but uh, try to optimize best as much as possible and whichever category policy you can get understood so guys you know the answer is very clear you know number one uh, make sure that you buy health insurance as early as possible or else you know you would have to really go through a lot of uh, you know difficulties to get a get, get an insurance policy and just from your answer mahavir you know you you just uh, touched upon a bit of, uh, on employer insurance right, right. so just building up uh, upon that you know sure. so why is it necessary to have your own health own personal health insurance cover on top of your employer insurance could you just tell me that because i have personally seen a lot of people who say yeah. that you know yeah. i have my personal uh, i have my employer insurance so i would need to buy one more on top of it so yeah You're right right so uh, there are three key reasons right uh, where you uh, need to have your own insurance the first two are very common and people have heard about this if they been on twitter for let's say more than half a year or year is that you know you you are when you are buying an employer policy or policies linked to your employment and if you basically join a company where there is no health insurance then obviously your health insurance uh, is terminated as soon as you uh, separate from the organization that's the first point second point is basically uh, that when you buy only a health insurance uh, when you cover yourself only from a health insurance of your employer you are assuming that when you become a senior citizen or when you retire from this company you will get a health insurance that that takes us to the previous point that we spoke about is that it becomes very very difficult as you grow old or when you get a disease to get a health insurance so it's a big risk that you're taking and in a very big assumption that you're taking that may abhi health insurance se cover ho jata hu because my company is giving it why to waste money and why to waste premium and basically wait till i retire and then i buy a policy or jab main agar let's say startup karta hu ya i basically retire or i become financially free at that time i'll buy a policy that's a very very risky assumption because if there is any disease that you carry at that time it will become very difficult for you to get a comprehensive health insurance you will have to compromise the last point is the most important point and that's something that i am very passionate of and i am probably going to make a t-shirt one day on on this thing is that <laughs> uh, is is that if your employer is going to decide a such a critical and such an important part of your risk management you are basically assuming that they will always have your best interests in mind when they are taking a cover right that they will basically jo cfo beta hai tumhare employer ka ya jo hr wala beta hai tumhare company ka that guy has your best interest in mind is an assumption you are making right i have seen the best of the companies with the most best intentions reducing the cover or curtailing their cover when they have had budget issues right cfo ne bola ke main 3 crore ke upar premium nahi pay karunga annually now you will have to compromise your cover so why would you want to leave control of such a large important part of your personal finance with someone who probably may have a conflict of interest with you or probably may have some different uh, goals to achieve in their uh, specific job or their career right if i am a finance head i will basically look at optimizing on the budget of uh, health insurance for my company ki kitna sasta ho sakta kitna paisa main bacha sakta hu right many companies are finance driven correct yeah. so you are leaving control to that cfo or that head of hr to decide ki what kind of uh, health insurance you buy it is equivalent to like you leaving the decision it's as personal as you leaving your decision of what kind of car what kind of house what kind of clothes you will wear or what kind of mobile phone you will buy will you leave these decisions with your employer you will not 
health insurance is, no, no, is yeah. as personal right and hence you should not leave it to anybody else yeah i think the last point that you made was very uh, you know it was an eye opener you know you are leaving, leaving such a critical part of your personal finance to someone else and they may not really have they do not really have your best interest in mind correct <laughs> so yeah and do send the, send me that t-shirt okay <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, you know so was was the most optimal and the best way to build a health insurance cover for a family say a family of 3 or 4 people yeah right so uh, the way i look at it is that first of all uh, it's the coverage right so we spoke about the coverage saying that let's say i'm starting uh, the policy at the age of 25 what i will do is that first i'll buy us i'll start small i'll start with a cover between 5 and 10 lakhs uh, then wait for a wait for a milestone so if there is a milestone like marriage or let's say becoming a parent at that time which could be in the if i'm i'm obviously simplifying things and it may not be the same age but this is like an example is that between 28 and 32 33 people get married at that age group whenever you are basically seeing a milestone where your responsibilities are increasing you should basically at that stage review your cover and move to a larger cover which could be in the age which could be between 10 to 15 lakhs per adult family member right uh, that's the coverage uh, part of the thing right the other thing is family floater versus individual our view is buy a family floater but buy enough coverage which is equivalent to the sum of coverage that you would have had if you would bought, bought an individual cover uh, let me explain with an example so we said that 15 lakhs per individual should be the cover since if you are buying 15 lakhs individual policy it is better to buy a 30 lakh floater policy for two adults right so look at it that the advantages of floater are that let's say if there is a person in the in both of these uh, people who are taking the policy needs a cover more than 15 lakhs there is a larger float that is available for this second person uh, for the for the first person who is basically let's say having a major hospitalization so floater gives you that additional float and you are basically covered under the same policy so between individual and floater floater is something that should be uh, taken but with adequate coverage which is a sum of the adequate coverage for both of these people right uh that is floater versus yeah. individual third the way to optimize is if you are looking at making it affordable for you in the long run then the strategy of buying a top up policy a super top up policy is something that we typically recommend so our recommendation usually is to buy a 10 lakhs base policy which is a floater policy and then buy a if there are two adults that you are covering then buy a 20 lakh super top up policy right a super top up policy is a policy which is like an uh is you could say an extension to your main policy where you get a much larger cover for your long term healthcare requirements at very very cheap premiums like a 20 lakh extension on your 10 lakh health insurance policy will hardly cost you like 8 to 10000 rupees a year right so by paying let's say your base policy is costing you 20 25000 rupees by paying another for 10 lakh rupees by paying another 8000 rupees you can 3x your cover and ensure that your cover is relevant for for a for for your complete lifetime right? so that is the third point that we usually recommend apart from this we always strongly recommend that you buy a critical illness policy critical illness policy solves for a very very different need and this is going to become very very relevant as we move forward all of us uh, uh, you know in the next 10 to 15 years the way we are living our lives criticalness in my view and unfortunate for me to say this is that criticalness is likely to become a, a epidemic in the long run and i am not trying to scare people here but the way we are living our lives uh, the kind of lifestyle we live the kind of stress and uh, uh, lives we live stressful lives we live the background and the and the environment that we live in the kind of pollution that we see that what i started with the conversation that we started with all these put together we are at a risk of a critical illness happening in our lifetime for a lot of people like there is a report which says one out of 10 people will get critic with get cancer uh, in in the current population that exists in the country right there is a there is a a, a very credible institute which has said this right uh, uh, so from that perspective having a critical illness policy which basically takes care of ensuring that your loss of income that occurs because of a, a, a serious illness 
uh, getting you getting diagnosed by a serious illness is something which is covered through a separate policy like a critical illness policy so this is exactly what i have done for my family and what i basically told you is what i have done for myself and this is what i recommend to anybody any any customer any friend any advisor anybody understood so again a very comprehensive answer mahavir and uh, guys uh, i hope you have you had paid good attention to it because you know mahavir laid out some four options for you to just bump up your coverage and again just uh, reiterating your uh, yeah. previous answer you know it's not as if uh, you know you have to just put in an optimum cover for example a 22 year old buying a 5 lakh health cover you know you have to keep in mind the future inflation and of course like you said you know healthcare inflation is so high and again like you rightly said you know a lot of uh, these critical illnesses are becoming you know very common so definitely uh, mahavir you know we spoke uh, about insurance a lot you know now coming to the end part of it you know you you do aap itna mehnat karke ke insurance lete ho but you know jab aapko uski zarurat padti hai you know when you are about to claim right it gets rejected so what is your redressal mechanism in that case and how do you actually ensure that your claims don't get rejected any right. any tricks any tips uh, that you would recommend from two decades of experience in the industry right 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 so uh, yeah this is a very very important thing so uh, first thing uh, is that uh, uh, that you should do is that you should do a very strong due diligence of the kind of policy that you buy so ensure that you buy a policy which is covering all the all the major expenses that you foresee uh, in a, in in your life right uh, which i have explained in detail in the start of this conversation that's the first thing second thing is ensure that you have someone credible on your side who can manage uh, a, a difficult situation that happens let's say uh one out of 100 claims could go wrong or basically there could be a dispute like someone i know and uh, uh, uh had a very very uh, a, a claim rejected for a very very uh, stupid or flimsy reason right uh, it, it required only an advisor to tell that person right ki write this mail to the insurance company and your claim will get approved right and that mail was written by by the advisor for the customer the customer just forwards that mail to the insurance company and the claim which was rejected got paid right so having someone who has the no. the right knowledge about insurance and someone who has experience about insurance is very very important uh, to have on your side is the second thing the third thing and equally important thing is ensure that you are doing enough homework before you fill the proposal form that an insurance company gives you to fill even if the advisor is asking you to be lazy and just sign on the proposal form and say that sir main baki sab bhar dunga never allow that to happen for in any case don't allow that to happen even if the advisor is filling the form for you for some reason you don't want to fill it ensure that you have read every word in that proposal form because that proposal form will be the thing that the insurance company is going to pick up when there is a claim to check if you have made any kind of wrong statements or wrong disclosures uh ensure that you you are very diligent about it like for example we spoke about senior citizen policies uh when you are filling the form for a senior citizen uh all of us have uh, who have parents we know that our uh, parents are very casual at least my parents are very casual about the diseases that they have and if you ask them ki aapko kya bimari hai they will tell you one bimari and not tell you three bimaris right uh, be very very diligent to find out all the medications that they are taking open their medical file and see all the papers of what kind of diagnosis that has happened ensure that you talk to the doctor or their family doctor and talk to them and find out ki unko kya kya bimari hai and ensure that all that is mentioned in the in the declaration that is going to the insurance company if you do these three things there is a very very low chance that your claim can get rejected because you have a you have understood the policy b you have ensured that all the declarations made are rightly made and c you have an expert on your side who can take care of any kind of you know problems or things that go wrong so all these three things if you check the boxes very very low chance that your claim will get uh, you will have bad experience with with an insurance policy specifically health insurance sure Uh, so guys in the interest of time i'm going to take one last question and we still have around 8 to 9 questions left so a last question for you mahavir you know can you explain can you just tell us a bit about beshak you know tell us about your experience and what really led you to found beshak you know right 
Yeah, so I've been a distributor all my life. I sold insurance uh, through multiple companies all my life. And what I realized is that as much as I try to basically keep things uh, conflict free and keep it very focused on the customer at scale, meaning uh, I have run companies which uh, did 10 crores of premium a month and 15 crores of premium a month. At scale, when you basically uh, set up a call center and uh, drive business, uh, through a call center it's very difficult to uh, be uh, true to the customer because uh, there are sales incentives that come to play there are so many issues that come into play your relationship with insurance companies come into play uh, what i realized is that while being a distributor and at scale being a distributor it was very difficult for me to be customer centric and ensure that we get the right neutral information that the customer is looking for uh, for uh, get that information to the customer right a uh, very simple example is a, a very, very simple comparison between two companies is today not clearly available in any website in the country, right, is what I saw. Uh, whatever I tried to build, we were basically constrained either with regulations or uh, when I was a distributor or we were constrained with the relationships that we had with insurers. I couldn't mention things that I wanted to mention. That's what led to the idea of building a neutral platform where we don't have any strings attached with any insurance company and we are able to show information that the customer wants to read about and make decisions about. So that's why we created a very, very neutral platform. We have no affiliation with any insurance companies. And this, pro pro this, this product is what I wanted to see in the market where customers can come and without any worry, make decisions uh, about insurance. That's the first thing that we built. The second thing that came out of this same thing is that after we help people discover plans, customers came us to ask that where should we buy these policies from? And that's where we realized that we spoke a lot about buying policies from advisors. Uh, uh, the problem that existed is that a lot of people were not able to find credible advisors in their geography or the location that they stayed in. Uh, so we took up the second challenge of curating financial advisors and putting it up on our website. So our website has two things today. You can discover the right plan for you, which is very unique to your personal needs. And the second thing that you get is you get to find the right advisors who can be on your site uh, uh, while you buy the policy so that they can take care of your policy and your claims uh, through the policy term. So that is basically what Payshak does. We solve the problem of finding the policy for you and finding the right advisor for you. Uh, that's that's really awesome, Mark. You know, you you just trying, you you had a problem, you solved it, and now you're trying to solve it for the masses. And to be honest, you know, uh, in a very true sense, I'm very happy that Beisha got off the ground. And uh, you know, today, uh, I mean, your content is awesome. Uh, like I like I said at the start of the spaces, right? Whenever I have a doubt on insurance, I just go to your website, and it gets solved within a minute. <laughs> so uh, with that, folks, uh, you know, the spaces has come to an end. I thank Mahavir. Uh, a lot for his precious time uh, and uh, I, I wish Beishak all the best to scale up and to educate the masses from myself and the team JST. And we'll try to get Mahavir on uh, more such sessions because I still see that a lot of doubts and a lot of requests are there. Uh, but don't worry guys, we'll get him again. And yeah, thanks a lot for joining in and uh, have a great weekend. Good night. Thank you, Mahavir. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.